Instead, we have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves and each other. This nation, it will take standing in one another's shoes and remembering that we are our brother's keeper. We are our sister's keeper. This will not be easy, but America's story tells me it is possible. Sometimes you see him and he just looks like it's too much. But I'm so proud of him. <laughs> He's staying on track. Yeah. It, keeps it made me think of. Uh, All right. Yes. Oh, hi. Um, hi. <laughs> it made me think of the. Um, I was watching a lot of news last night uh, about uh, the governor who went off to. Oh my goodness. Argentina. Uh, can, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I think the the left newscasts are in some ways no better than the right way of presenting things. For one thing, they're all spending way too much time on it. I they brought even brought Dan Rather in. I've never seen anyone look more sad and pathetic because you know it, it's not the type of thing he wanted to be reporting on. Yeah. And. Uh, <clears throat> and they didn't really want to hear what he had to say, which was, you know, let the man get through this in his own way rather than repeating the story ad nauseum over and over and over That's again, true. his confession. And I, and I just, it made me sort of brought me up and made me think, you know, it's not just one group or the other. There is a real strong lack of empathy among everybody and and everything has to be made to use against you you know and uh, I mean I didn't like that guy I think he gave the response after the win of the uh, election or, or something and for the Republican Party but mm -hmm. you know, was, it, was it the was it, was it yes was it? Oh, I'm sorry anyway it doesn't matter but uh, but basically <laughs> just that you're just, I just think, you know, you have to get past what you can use it for, you know, and, and really just get to the person <laughs> himself, you know, or herself. And, so and you're so I, I just, him saying all that made, and sort of making us sort of laughing and having our guy make jokes about it, which is, I thought that was great, but... They're on both sides, they're doing the same thing, you know. No. So, yeah. so the other film clips, I mean, were those co from comedy? Actually, I haven't watched TV, so I'm like, okay. okay. So were those news clippings, or were those parodies, or were they comedy? Uh, one was uh, Colbert, which is a comedy uh, on the comedy channel. Uh -huh. So it was a mixture of different uh, yeah. clips. But then the other ones, were those? Um, opinions that were expressed by those yeah. people were yeah. being interviewed, and they weren't they weren't comic. No, oh, you're talking no. Steel. Uh, you're Steel. Steel. Right. Well, you had a number of different <laughs> men mostly. Yeah, there was Orrin Hatch. Orrin Hatch. Most of them were speeches that Obama or or Michelle were giving in various functions. Yeah. Well, that right. series well, that series the, of uh, that series of Colbert quotes was series. within the Colbert report. Right. Right. So it was all it was all comedy. Right. Uh, he was saying oh, 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 I see. he was saying you know I mean he he assumes a certain persona of you know, like a right wing ideologue. Yeah. He picks up those. Words. I, I've heard about that. I didn't know. Okay. Got yeah. It. Yeah. So, sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm on a different planet. All the teenagers get their news from hell. Right. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Edward. I enjoyed that comedy portion there. <laughs> Very nice, and I know that you have begun this from the very beginning. And uh, I want to thank you very much for bringing it to where we are now. Um, when I think of Barack Obama and empathy, I think of his mother. His, he talks about her. He says that she was the one that told him 
put yourself on the, in that person's feeling, in that body. And she had a great influence on the way he feels about empathy. And uh, so he will never be able to visit a grave, but just the ocean out there in the Pacific. But uh, you know, we have to be very thankful for her for bringing this man up, and also with Granny. Mm -hmm. So I remember, you know, his family. Isn't and thank you. I can't thank believe you. they're not alive. I, I just, and he would not have a grave to visit. That's the sad part. I know. Because that hurts me every time. I'm like, there's four kids. I don't have a family. I don't have this. And you're like, here he is. He's done all this stuff. And all those people. And he's, they're not even. I, he knows they're looking down on him. But, you know, it's just. Right. It's sad. I'm so glad her mom's in here. But, you know, it's just. Right. You know, his, her dad worked all his life. I think his family did an outstanding job. Both of them. And believe families. it or not. I know you're going to be very upset when I said that, but I think Reverend Wright did something to influence him. Yeah, they blew that. That's and what she was saying. They're distracting people. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. it's a big distraction from the truth. And that man is a great man. And I have a feeling that uh, that um, Michelle's, you know, mother and father had some influence. So, but the, the mother is the one that keeps coming to me. Right. Mm -hmm. you right. Know, thank thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think we had a comment back here. Oh, from a health care perspective. Good. I think with empathy, um, when she mentioned about the mother, I think it's been sad that it's, it's a, a, a body of people that will say if you get treatment or not for something. Mm -hmm. um, such as cancer, so many of us lose people from that. Mm -hmm. And um, they can't get the proper treatment that they need to get. And somebody actually rules on this. The committee goes back and looks at your records or whatever and makes a decision on if you should have this care or not. That's just, you're, you're killing someone. That's yes. no different than killing a person. Yeah. Or like I just went through that. I so staged three cancer. I think that everything needs to be just reorganized. Really I don't know. It just needs to start from scratch and figure out something. I don't know <coughs> what, what, but what we have to think about. Um, People are not getting the care that they should, and I don't. Think, I, I think it's just a lot of politics. I think it's you know, one hand is in it. Uh, from I used to do building uh, for insurance, and I see that you know, a person. I have a friend who had uh, kidney transplant, plus she had a uh, heart attack. Uh, she had a heart transplant, and she has to be on medication for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And she told me the other day that the doctor just changed her medication. She went to go pick up medication from the pharmacy, and it was different medication, and they hadn't told her. And I said, well, you know, it's probably because the, pharmac the pharmaceuticals have a new prescription or a new drug that they want her to be on, and the doctor gets a certain cut for him putting her on this versus keeping her on what she was on before. And she said when she changed, she's been on it a couple of days and she's having problems. Mm -hmm. But the doctor never mentioned to her about changing it and any side effects or anything mm -hmm. um, with the medication. But I said it just isn't, it's just so, many, so much politics involved with it. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it just bothers me because so many things, so many people die from not getting treatment. And they, these are people that even have insurance. Right. So right. the people that don't have insurance. Right. Well, that's a whole other story. It, it, there are uh, lots of areas, and we're going to be, uh, in the next section, actually, we're going to be dovetailing empathy with healthcare. We're going to be putting them together. This was more to react on, and many of you in this room seem very enlightened about the fact that empathy has been one of uh, Obama's major values through, uh, that he has talked about as you were commenting probably his entire life, but during the entire presidential campaign, and I uh, don't think it was very obvious to some people until it came up now with the Supreme Court judge, and that uh, he keeps emphasizing that we need to work on our empathy deficit, which is what we're here to for tonight, uh, to, to do that, to, you know, to bring that um, to present.